Hello and welcome to the first video in this series of sort of foundation skills for being a scientist. What we're going to look at in this sort of series of videos is things like drawing tables, drawing graphs, correlation, causation, and a few other sort of foundation skills that you need to be a good chemist, physicist, or biologist, or any other scientist that might be out there. So, what we're going to be looking at in this video is we're going to be looking at how to draw a table, and we're going to be looking at understanding what the independent and dependent variables are in order to help us do that. So, let's begin. We're going to start by talking about the two types of variable that we've got. Okay, we have got the independent variable, and we have got the dependent variable. Now, these two words are really important when it comes to um, experiments in any form of science. And we have to know what the definition of each one is. So, first off, okay, let's talk about the independent variable. So, the independent variable is essentially the thing, okay, the condition that the scientist is controlling or altering to investigate its effect on the dependent variable, okay? So, let me just write that out, in okay, case so the independent variable is the condition being controlled or changed, and I'm going to put in here by the scientist, to investigate its effect on the dependent variable. Okay, now in isolation, that statement's a little bit confusing because we don't yet know what the dependent variable is. Well, what is the dependent variable? The dependent variable is the factor that is measured. In an experiment. Let's say, for example, we have a biologist, and what they want to look into is they want to look into the effect that light has on the growth of a plant. There we go, masterful artistry skills for you. So we have two things here that the scientists have identified. One is light, and the other is the growth of the plant. As I said, what the scientist is interested in is the effect of the change of light. So already, using that terminology, we can identify our light as the independent variable. Because that is what the scientist will change or control in the experiment. Their dependent variable is going to be the growth of the plant. Now, there's many different ways that they could measure that. They could sort of measure it every day for a week or just after a certain period of time and then compare the results. So, a scientist does this experiment and what they do is they look at the effect of light in the sun and in the dark. And then what they do is they measure the height after one week. Okay, and they get the following data. They have the sun has grown to an almighty seven centimeters, and in the dark, it's grown to one centimeter. Okay, and maybe they repeated this with a number of different things. They had one that went to 1.5 centimeters, and one that got to a one centimeter, and here we had one that got to eight centimeters, and also 10 centimeters. So, 
this is the data that they've managed to collect. But how do they then go about drawing this into a table and making it look nice and neat? So, this is how they do it. So tables are made up of rows and columns. So just to give you a little reminder of that, a column is what goes down. Okay, so these would be your columns. And rows go across. So we've got to draw a table using rows and columns. So how would we arrange the uh, table in this example here? Well, first off, we know that the light is our independent variable. So when we draw our column in the left handmost column, goes the independent variable. So, if I draw out my table, like so, in the left handmost column, this is where my independent variable goes. So I've got two. I've got the sun, and then I've got the dark. Now, each of these get their own row. There we go. Now, the rest of the information goes in other columns to the right hand side of this. So we've got three sets of data. So we've basically essentially got plant number one, we've got plant number two, and plant number three. Now because we're using mathematical data, we would also do an average. Now you might not always have an average because this could just be observations, okay? But what you notice is the data is now going to go to the right hand side of where our independent variables are. Now we just write that data in. Now, there's an interesting and important point here to make. Notice here, okay, that our data is to one decimal place. Okay, this one right here is to one decimal place. I've now got to make sure that all my data is to one decimal place because we like to be nice and uniform as uh, scientists. So what I would have to write is I'd have to write 7.0, 8.0, 10.0, one point zero, one point five, and one point zero. Now what I would have also done is done a little bit of maths and worked out the average. So the average in this case here, again I'm going to put it to one decimal place, is eight point three, and here it's one point two. And this is all to one decimal place. So the final thing to do just to make my time um, so the final thing to do to this table to make it nice and neat is to just write in the title across the top here, okay, for our um, dependent variables, which is the height of plant in centimetres. Now what you'll notice is you'll notice that my units, okay, are up the top here, okay. Within the body of the table, there are no, no, uh, no units, okay. There are only numbers. And this is because we like things to be nice and neat. So that's one example of how we can draw a table. Let's have a look at a second one. So on the screen right now is another example. So here we've got an experiment that was done to measure the rate of reaction by recording the volume of gas produced every 10 seconds, two minutes. So in the left hand most column here, we've got our time and the time is our independent variable. And then here on our right hand side, in the first column, we've got our dependent variable, which is our um, volume of gas being produced. And then if we were to do further repeats of this, I would just add in more columns where I would put in my um, future results. Okay, so if I said repeated it for a second and third time, they would go into these two columns here. And then at the end, I might even do an average column. Now, again, with this one, what you'll notice is you'll notice that our units, okay, are up the top so that there are no units written in the table, okay? So in the table, we only have numbers, only numbers, okay? Unless, of course, your table involves observations when it might be words and various other things. But if you've got data that involves numbers, really, there should only be numbers. 
So that concludes this video on how to draw a table. What we're going to look at in the next video is we're going to look at how to turn this information into a graph and some of the basics of graph drawing. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will catch you in the next video.